This is my Crytac Chris Vector. Today, we're gonna be going over my custom build for this thing, but it's not as custom as you think, but it is much better than it was, than it was in the box. So first, before we start this video, we gotta prove that this is an airsoft toy and not real. As you can see, it is just an RC car in a shell and the thing is unsafe and there's nothing in the chamber. So with that out of the way, let's talk about this iconic video game weapon. And we're starting with the flash hider. See, the flash hider here is actually metal and it is the proprietary vector muzzle brake. One thing I didn't like about this thing is that one, it is held in by a grub screw. It is a little bit annoying if I want to attach a suppressor or a tracer on this thing. I have to get a grub screw at 1.5 millimeter and then do all that just to get it off. And another thing I didn't like about this, although the build quality is great and it's solid, it does rust. And I'm not sure if that's a thing with the Crytac itself or it's because I play in Japan. In Japan in the summers, it is very humid and there's a lot of moisture in the air. When you're outside or inside, the difference between the level of humidity is quite extreme. So that's probably why this rusts and it wasn't meant for that kind of weather condition. Because this is a product that's meant for the States, it is kind of a little bit disappointing, but it doesn't affect the function. It, it's not brittle or anything like that. I'm sure if I just dipped it in some vinegar or some anti-rust, I would get rid of this. But other than that, it's pretty good. Moving on to the receiver here, we have our Chris iron sights. And these are so good. I love these iron sights. They have such a great aperture. You can also switch it from the back to a semi-auto single fire one where it's a little tiny peephole. But the big aperture is just really, really great. Very, very good target acquisition. Very, very fast, very, very wide eye relief. Of course, you can adjust them as well, as much as you possibly can, but it is airsoft and you know sometimes the BBs won't go exactly where you want. Sometimes they're just way off to the extreme and your iron sights just simply cannot handle it. So it's better for you to put an optic on here. But for iron sights, they're very well made. They're very well locked in. Unlike the Knight's Armament, one that you kind of get with like the Maruis, they kind of get loose over time, especially the rear sight, but this does not move. They're very solid, very well made, and I applaud the boys at Crytac for making and choosing these really, really great iron sights. Now the upper receiver is a polymer receiver, and I will say it is very, very solid. We'll just talk about the receiver in general. We had the two-tone version here. The top receiver is very, very good, no creaking. However, it will creak around this area right here. If you somehow just want to press down near the dust cover, it will creak and bend around a little bit, but you're not gonna be doing that. Don't do that. It'll be fine. It is plastic in the end, and I believe it's the same material as the actual Chris Vector, probably plus or minus some things, but it is very solid other than that. You also might find some creak around the trigger box where you can, you can hear, hear it right here. If you, if you do press on it, but are you pressing on it like that? Probably not, so don't worry about that kind of creak, but overall, it's definitely not ABS plastic creaky like, you know, the Tokyo Marui ones. Now let's talk about the rail here that I kind of picked here. And you can notice that usually on my bills, I'll put a flashlight on here. And this time I do not have a flashlight, but I did put the rail on this side. One, it aesthetically looks cool with the two-tone. And two, if I put it on this side, it does interfere with the charging handle. And I know you don't actually have to use the charging handle, but for me and you guys know my videos, I like to do it for the reloads and the video and stuff like that. I noticed that when I pull it, I go from underneath and I kind of scoop underneath and grab and pull. And that's how I rack that charging handle. You can learn to go above and go this way, but having the rail on this side kind of gets in the way and it's kind of annoying. So I didn't really like having it there. I like having that freedom. However, I can see a reason for putting it on this side and that would be to have a sling point. However, I think that if you don't get a low profile one, it will literally just get in the way of the charging handle. So mechanically and ergonomically, it doesn't make sense to have it here. So it's better to have it on this side. And if you do decide to put a flashlight on, you can kind of get like the extended hand guard and you kind of like put it on here. But the reason I don't use a flashlight is because sometimes you'll want to use the vector and fold it up for transport or something like that. And it will actually get in the way of your flashlight. The wiring will get all messed up and everything like that. So I wanted to have a versatile vector. So if I needed to still have that firepower and go into a small location or a small area, I can still kind of fold it up and then kind of go from there. But if I had the flashlight there, it would kind of screw it up. 
And for me, my personal play style, I don't really use flashlights as much as I'd want to. They are kind of more there for looks, so. So the elephant in the room is this little foregrip right here. This is called the Vector Strike Advanced Grip. This is actually really, really good. Originally, I had an RVG, just the regular Magpul RVG on there. Get that nice little broomstick kind of grip on here. But when I switched to this one, it's just made for it. So if you didn't know, without any attachments, the way to grip the vector is basically like this, the magwell grip. And what I tend to do is I'll tend to C-clamp it, which kind of gets away in the bolt, touch the magazine catch, and it gives you less stability, even though it is pretty stable. And what I like about this grip is that it is super duper solid. And it has a very, very specific angle that mimics the magwell here. So instead of getting a tight grip like this, you're getting a tight grip in front. So for people with longer arms like me, I can easily just put it like that. And that's really, really cool and very, very nice. I could also hold it like this if I wanna be a little bit smaller and kind of reduce my profile. I can kind of C clamp a little bit if I want to and kind of use this like this. It just feels very, very ergonomic and very, very smooth. And it doesn't look too bad. It actually kind of matches the profile. And I'm sure if you went for like the M-lock extension and kind of made it a little bit longer, it would look really cool. But the best part about it is the magwell here. So this magwell is very, very nice. It is a blessing in disguise. I love it so much. So with the regular stock vector, it's just not even, a, it's not flared at all. So it's kind of hard to get the magazine in on the first try. So you kind of have to, you know, aim a little bit. But with the flared magwell, it, gives you so much room for error. It'll just, it'll catch it no matter what. I like this grip as well because it also acts as a mount. So if you wanted to mount on a piece of cover or something like that, it gives you that footing right here. You might have noticed when I was reloading, it is quite hard to kind of grab the magazine unless you just kind of let it drop out like that. So what everyone needs to get and not even capping is this Lilacs Custom Mag Catch. Turns your reloads from a 3.5 second all the way to a one second. You can adjust it with these two screws and just kind of make it closer to you. But I'm pretty long, so I don't really need it. And I think for me personally, if I had it too close to my finger, I would accidentally touch the thing. So having it in the kind of shortest position is actually makes it more intentional for me to do it. And it could just kind of change grips and reload. But anything's faster than this little button, which kind of sucks, but yeah, that's, that's, that's that. But yeah, this is definitely a game changer. If you can get one, get one right away for any vector user. Even if you are a real steel person, there's no point to not use this thing. So one thing to note is that these two screws may get loose over time. So you can use a little bit of blue Loctite on there, thread lock, and you can kind of tighten these in there and you'll be good to go. Okay, so moving along, we have, of course, my EOTech. This is my real EXPS20, no night vision, but it is an actual hologram. So this thing is super, super cool. I actually throw this optic on a lot of my Airsoft toys because it's just that good. It has zero parallax, it's a hologram, very wide window. The glass is made out of polycarbonate, so it's not getting shot out, especially in Japan with 0.98 joules, even point blank, it will not dent or break whatever but just in case i do have a guns modify screen protector on here because the hurricane ones break super easily one thing i also like about the eotech is that if i'm on the fly and i need to actually change zero it's easily done with just my nail or a coin or whatever i could easily change the zero on the fly which is great so on the grip here you can see that i have an extended butt cap because the stock one will barely fit a 7.4 and that's one of the drawbacks about the vector so the vector can take 7.4 or 11.1, but the space is very, very tiny as you can see. So if you wanted to use just a regular stick battery like this, it is not going to fit, but you can actually use this specific Vector 7.4 battery. As you can see, you can just kind of put it in, get the extended cap, you got lots of room now, and you're not squishing any of the cables, which is really nice. But this is one of the worst things about the Vector, which is what, what I don't like, is that the firing response, and I know I said it was good, but after actually using it in real time, I did not like the trigger. It's very, it was very mushy, it was very slow, and it didn't feel great. And I can show you right now, 7.4, iPro on. You can see it doesn't even keep up. So there's a lot to be desired with that. So I didn't quite like it. So what I actually did, instead of upgrading the gearbox and everything, Crytax are really great out of the box, is that I switched to an 11.1. And as you can see now with the 11.1, it fits a lot easier because of this butt cap. But now let's hear the response. Look at that. 
so much better. However, I did have to do a few modifications to make the 11.1 work with the Vector. One of the limitations for building any kind of custom airsoft toy in Japan is staying under that 0.98 limit and even trying to stay below 0.95. So making any kind of change to barrel, bucking, springs, and stuff like that can cause you to go over the legal limit. So when I got this out of the box, it was actually only shooting about 80. And then I changed it out for an MS-90. And that brought me up to like 87, 85 or so. What I wanted is I wanted more response. So I changed to 11.1, which was fine. It was running how it is, how you hear now. But when I was shooting in two round burst, it was shooting three round bursts. It was overspinning because the MS-90 was a little bit weak. So we actually moved up to an MS-100. And now, now we can do all that with the 11.1. And it's super snappy and I get that 11.1 response and I didn't even have to change the motor. This combination of the MS-100 and the 11.1 and one more part uh, makes this thing good enough for me anyway. And that one more part is this custom trigger right here. This custom trigger is also by Lilacs, oh my God. But with some disassembly, you can actually adjust the length of pull on this to touch that micro switch. And I've set it to the shortest it can possibly go. And I can imagine this with a nice DSG build or whatever you might want to do and make it super custom, blah, blah, blah. In combination with this custom trigger can get you some really, really, really snappy brrr, vector builds. And I think this is just a great recipe. So the last thing to talk about is the stock here. And I'll say right off the bat, this stock is great. And I've said it before, I have no need to change it out. There are options where you can go to like a Picatinny rail and make it a buffer tube and all that stuff. But I actually really like the vector stock looks aside. One, it's foldable. And two, it's very, very solid. And it has this really nice section over here, which makes it really great for low optics, face gear. And since there's no recoil, it's very easy to manipulate and kind of just use. So you don't have to bring your head forward like this. You can just have it back here, have it chilling on your chin and you're already good to go. You could also extend this as well by loosening the grub screws and kind of make it longer. But I personally keep it a little bit shorter because I want this to be a shorter gun and kind of keep myself a little bit more closed off than usual when I'm using this thing. Now I have one grip about this is that over time you will get some play and wobble. And that probably has to do with the sling point here, which is where I actually put my sling for a one point sling setup. So it probably just messes around with the stock over time and makes it wobble. But for the most part, in actual practical usage, it's not gonna be playing around that much. So I think it's fine. But what about its gameplay viability? It is a PDW, an SMG, if you will. So it is quite short. So that means it's really good for CQB and you can just kind of run it like this or you can put on a blaster or a short little tracer and you can keep it short. It'll probably be the only one you ever need. If you run it stock with a 7.4 and without any of these attachments, especially the mag catch here, it is quite a cumbersome weapon. I would only call it viable. But after you put at least the mag catch as well as the custom trigger and an 11.1, this thing becomes pretty top tier viable in terms of how well you'll do in the game. Outside, it actually performs pretty okay. Considering the little short, tiny barrel inside of it, it actually does quite well for outside for 30 meters, 20 meters. But I think for, you know, America and Europe and all that stuff, it's probably, you probably want to upgrade it. Um, because it probably doesn't have that range. But CQB, perfectly fine, great rate of fire. We're playing semi-auto here, so my build is more around response than it is around range, so. And of course, it's two-tone, it's super cool. But anyway guys, thanks so much for watching. If you like this video and wanna see more videos about Airsoft in Japan, go ahead and click this video right here.